This is a playoff series that if you told me in 2020 that it would be one of the most anticipated first round matchups uh, for a playoff series down the line, like two, three years from that time, you would probably call me crazy. Because if you told me in 2020 that three years from now, Cavs vs. Knicks would be the matchup in the Eastern Conference to be most excited about, I would have called you crazy. Uh, but we're here now. And, you know, I am excited. I think this is going to be the most competitive series in the first round between two very different teams, I would say. You have the Knicks, who are, you know, a borderline top 10 scoring team in the league. They average 116 points per game. That puts them at 11th in the league. And, you know, they're middle of the pack to maybe upper rest on defensive team. They average 113 points allowed per game, which is 13th, which is, you know, upper half, but close to the middle of the pack. And then you have the Cleveland Cavaliers who, scoring-wise, are one of the worst teams in the league. They average 112 points per game, uh, which is 25th in the league. But they are the best scoring defense in the league, as they average 106.9 points allowed, which is the best in the league. Uh, they don't play with a lot of pace, which shocks me, given their personnel. Uh, they have the worst pace in the league at 95.7. Uh, but again, best defense in the league, both by points allowed and defensive rating. Uh, and even though they only average 112 points per game, you know, which is again 25th in the league, and I say only 112 points, it's a pretty good number. Uh, their offensive rating is ninth in the league, uh, while the Knicks actually have the third best offensive rating in the league. So. It's a pretty interesting matchup. If you want to talk about who I think is the best player in this series, I think it's easily Donovan Mitchell. I know people look at what happened last year in the playoffs, where it wasn't great for him. But really, outside of that series and like a series like very early on in his career, he's been incredible in the playoffs. You know, he's one of the best playoff performers in the league. And I know people think, well, he hasn't won a title. That doesn't really mean that you can't be a great playoff performer. Luka Doncic is a great playoff performer, and he hasn't made the finals yet. So, I don't really get that argument. So, I think the fact that he has been great in the regular season, he's probably going to be first-team All-NBA this season. I think deservedly so. You know, he's led the Cavs to the fourth seed. He's elevated that team. From, you know, a borderline playoff team last year, although I do think they would have made the playoffs if Jared Allen didn't deal with injuries down the stretch last season, to like a legit like threat in my opinion. In my opinion, the Cavs are the third best team in the East. I know the record doesn't suggest it, the Sixers are ahead of them, but I like them more than I like the Sixers. I, if I'm a Celtics fan, which I am, I would be much more worried about facing the Cavs in the playoffs uh, than I would about the Sixers necessarily. Uh, I know that might be a hot take, but I really like this Cleveland team a lot. But even with that, I feel like the Knicks match up with them well. You look at this Knicks team, and, you know, it might be tough to trust Julius Randle in the playoffs, considering what we saw recently from Julius Randle in the playoffs. Also, we don't know, like, the status on his injury. He probably should be back, but we don't know. RJ Barrett's a wild card. It's tough, really, to trust him in the playoffs, in my opinion. But I really like this team's chances, mostly because of Jalen Brunson, who was incredible this season. Jalen Brunson played like an all-star this year. I thought he should have made the all-star team. Uh, you know, 24, 4, 6, 49, 41, 82 shooting splits. Gets to the line. Really tough player. I like him a lot. We saw what happened when he faced off against Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs last season. So, that's a factor. Although, I think Mitchell will be a lot better considering I think he's much more engaged now. And he's on a team where I feel like he's more motivated than he was in Utah. You can kind of tell that it was looking like it was the end for that Utah team 
uh, and they didn't really put the wall into that. And I do like players outside of Brunson as well. I like Quentin Grimes. He's a really good young player. He's somebody that's a great three-point shooter, solid defender. I like Emmanuel quickly. I think he's going to be an X factor in this series. He might be the sixth man of the year. Personally, I think it's Malcolm Brogdon, but I wouldn't be upset if quickly won it. Uh, he's a electric scorer, pretty good passer, uh, and an incredible defensive player. One of the best defensive guards in the league. I think he's been all defense good. In fact, I put him on first team all defense this year. I know it's a bit of a hot take, but what he does on defense. He's tougher than his frame suggests. He's really smart. Plays on the ball well. Incredible off the ball. Uh, makes those little plays that don't show up in the statistics. Uh, and this is a great disruptor that can play both on and off the ball. Uh, high motor player in general, but definitely on defense. So I think he's going to be an X factor in this series. Mitchell Robinson's obviously the big. Uh, I am worried about how. He will manage against like Evan Mobley, who is just an incredible lateral mover. Mitchell Robinson's a great like straight line athlete, uh, good like rim runner, but you know, laterally, he's not bad, but compared to Mobley, who's incredible laterally, I, I do have some questions there. I think Obi Toppin should be getting more minutes because Obi Toppin has proven whenever he's played, he's a good player. Dibs just doesn't like him for some reason, but he should play. Josh Hart's an X Factor. You know, high energy, motor, runs hot all the time. Like just those guys that you like on playoff teams that can be you energizers and can somewhat produce as well. Uh, I just like this Knicks team. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's a guarantee Randall plays well, but I think he'll play better than he did in that Atlanta series. Granted, that Atlanta series, he was flat out awful. But, you know, he's been all NBA good this year. And I think that if you can get something out of him, this series could be interesting. Now, if Randall and RJ, but more Randall, play like they did in the Atlanta series, this is over in five. Uh, you know, you look at the Cavs, you know, you can't have your best player play bad against this Cavs team. A Cavs team that has Darius Garland, an elite playmaker, Donovan Mitchell, a playoff riser, an elite scorer, Evan Mobley. A defensive player of the year caliber guy. Joe Down, a great defender. Kyrie Levert can heat up at any moment. Uh, Okoro, you know, I don't really think he's been great, but there have been flashes of, like, he can hit an open shot. Uh, so I like this guy. Ricky Rubio's a great backup point guard. So, like, you need your best player if you're the next to play well. And that will dictate the series. RJ also needs to play well if you want to win this series. If Julius plays well, this could go like seven games. But it's not a guarantee. If RJ and Julius play well, I think the Knicks could win this series. That's a big if though, that both of them play well. Let alone one of them plays well. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than some people think. Uh, I think some people think it's going to be a blowout. I think this goes six or seven games. If you had to ask me who I think was going to win this game, I would win the Cavs. Uh, well, not win this game, win this series. I would win Cavs in six just because of the volatility of Randall and Barrett. I think Brunson's going to play well. I think Josh Hart's going to play well. I think Quentin Grimes is going to play well. I think Emmanuel is going to play well. I think Mitchell Robinson is going to do what he can, but... It really is. It's too much of a risk factor with betting on Randall and Barrett playing well to pick the Knicks in this series. But it's possible that the Knicks do win this series, in my opinion. It kind of reminds me of the Kings Warriors series, where there's a lot of factors that could lead to both teams winning. Uh, you know, I still have less questions about the Cavs' path to winning the series than I do the Knicks. Where with the other series, uh, Sacramento and Golden State, like they both have a clear path to win it. Uh, and I do think, again, with the Knicks, there is a path to win it. Uh, but it's a volatile situation and a volatile factor that is basically the engine for the Knicks to win the series. And that's, again, Randall playing well and RJ Barrett playing well. Uh, is it possible? 
yes, more with Randall than I am with Barrett. I'm more worried about Barrett than I am about Randall in this series because Randall's a better passer. Uh, Randall puts in work on the boards a bit more than Barrett, even though Barrett's like a pretty good rebounder uh, for a wing. And I, I just think that Randall brings more to the table, which is why I'm a little less worried about it, but I still am worried. But yeah, that's my pick. I think the Cavs win this series in six games. Uh, that's my safe pick just based off the history of R.J. Barrett in the postseason and the history of Julius Randle. Compare that to what we've seen from Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs, which is a lot better than what we've seen from those two. Uh, and at the end of the day, when I'm more confident in the Cavs' best player than I am the Knicks' best player, and I also think the Cavs' best player is the best player in the series, I lean toward the Cavs, and I think that they probably win in six. Although I do think, again, there is a world where the Knicks win this series.